Welcome everyone um, to today's talk. Um, today is actually, um, oh sorry, this week is actually um, National Careers Week. So it's um, a week celebration of highlighting lots of different careers, what you might want to consider um, when um, you're older. So today we are joined by Luke, who's going to do a presentation on looking for construction industry, looking at practical and academic um, career routes and processes. Um, if we are using a live Q&A chat today, so at the end um, and during the session, please use the live Q&A chat and then we'll come to the questions at the end. In the meantime, um, I'd like to hand over to Luke. Thank you, James. Um, as James said, uh, my name's Luke. Um, I'm doing a presentation for National Careers Week um, on the topic of academic and practical career routes and processes within the construction industry. I'll briefly run over the uh, topics that we'll be covering um, in this presentation. So I'll do an introduction presentation outline. Um, I'll also cover what is an apprenticeship, how I was ashamed and hid me having dyslexia throughout my school life and working career, leading from school to college, what the apprenticeship entailed, career progression and qualifications, example projects I've worked on, my personal achievement with setting up my own company, Future Homes Design and Build. Um, people from both practical and academic backgrounds can have a great career in, in the construction industry, moral of the story, and then some top tips, uh, working out what's best for you, go in the apprenticeship route, go in the academic route, and lastly, um, some useful references for each of the different routes and generalised for all of the different routes. So uh, the introduction. So my name is Luke Burkett and I am the Managing Director of Future Homes Design and Build, acting as a self-employed company owner. And I'm going to be doing a presentation on working out what career qualification and training pathway is right for you, giving you the guidance and information on what to do for the different processes involved for each pathway, as well as telling you my story to where I have got to now. I personally progressed from school into a bricklaying apprenticeship, then furthered my career and education into construction site management, and then carried on progressing my career and education again up to a senior construction director level and then on to setting up my own company at the start of last year. Um, there are different ways to progress to my level that can be through both practical apprenticeship and academic routes, so can be achievable for anyone coming from different backgrounds, whether you are more practically or academically strong. I will later on in this presentation will be giving out top tips and advice on what processes are required from you for working out what career qualification and training route is best for, suited to you, as well as giving you advice on how to follow and organise you choosing and progressing down the different routes. So uh, one of the uh, routes that you can go is an apprenticeship. So what is an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship is a system for training a new generation of practitioners. So apprentices qualifying into trained, qualified and competent persons of a trade or profession with on the job training and often some accompanying study. Um, so classroom work, reading and training required within college or a training center or university uh, setting. Apprenticeships can also enable practitioners, so apprentices qualify, qualifying into trained, qualified and competent persons to gain a license to practice in a regulated occupation such as plumbing and electrics, as both of these trades require full training and registered qualifications to confirm their competence of legal, uh, sorry, of legally working on these types of, of works for general public in line with the current construction laws and policies. 
most of their training is done while working for an employer who helps the apprentices learn their trade or profession at a reduced pay rate compared to a fully qualified tradesperson and in, in exchange for their continued labour for an agreed period after they have achieved their measurable competencies. This is not always the case and sometimes it, it is only for the agreed apprenticeship period which most as a minimum will be a two year part time college and other days working on the job um, apprenticeship to get to an MVQ level two intermediate apprenticeship level. But a number of trades can require a third year and even more depending on if, if it's a rarer trade that requires longer time to learn and the third year takes an apprenticeship or apprentice, sorry, to an MVQ level three advanced craft award level, which is the equivalent of a trained and qualified advanced trade person, meaning they can, uh, when ready, um, they can take on the role of a foreman on a construction project managing the other lower level, less qualified and competent persons on the same trade or off the same trade. So how I was ashamed had hid me having dyslexia throughout my school life and working career. So during my school years, I was always ashamed of my dyslexia and the struggles I had with it. So only my teachers knew that I had it and I would never share this information with any of my friends or anyone else because I didn't want them thinking I was stupid or for them to wind me up about having it or judge me in a negative way. I again was ashamed of letting anyone know uh, when I progressed into the construction management roles about my dyslexia because I didn't want them to be capable of doing the role with the responsibilities it holds as most people would prejudge someone with dyslexia thinking that they could not be trusted with tasks that involve paperwork, forms and numbers, which is not necessarily true as as in my case, I was always good at maths and I'd learned techniques to be able to deal with paperwork forms and filing as I knew that I had weaknesses in these areas so that I became hypersensitive to checking over and over so that I knew that I wasn't making a mistake and now to the point where it can seem like a form of OCD um, that I can proofread somebody else's work and correct their grammar and mistakes. Even when I would go for a new job and fill out the application form and it would ask me if I had any forms of disabilities, I would never add that I had dyslexia for two reasons. One being that I didn't want to be prejudged before the interview and even being given the job as someone that wasn't capable of that role and its required responsibilities. And the second reason being that I was ashamed to admit that I had a learning difference that falls under the official category as a learning disability, as I didn't want to uh, risk uh, missing out on some of the good work opportunities that would progress my career level. Leading from school to college, uh, my school qualification qualifications that I managed to scrape through with when completing my GCSEs were C's and D's. Um, so I did not have the option to go to univers uh, university unless I resat some of these GCSEs or further courses in college to then get me to the qualification level, then hitting the requirements for going into a university degree course, which as I didn't actually enjoy academics because of my mild dyslexia, I did not want to pursue that pathway anyway. My qualifications did allow me to pursue an apprenticeship, which is something I wanted to do as it was a practical job and career to follow. And I had the dream to one day build my own house and then in also to enjoy building houses for others as you get a sense of achievement, seeing a permanent structure that was built by you for yourself and others to see. Um, so what the apprenticeship entailed. So the first two years, which brought me to the MVQ level two and intermediate construction award um, in brickwork, 
so I, I then started, so from the start of my apprenticeship, started a three year bricklaying apprenticeship with one of the largest national house builders at the time. I worked for them on their sites. They moved me around three to four days a week whilst attending college one to two days a week, depending on the college year program. I worked through both practical and theory work classes and modules at college while working on site the other days, learning as a bricklayer's labourer, then being al allowed to jump on the areas of brickwork to learn in line with my college, how to be a bricklayer and how to build to their standards of work required by them in a construction site setting. At the end of my two years college um, apprenticeship and working on site, I achieved an MVQ, so National Vocational Qualification Level 2 in bricklaying, which is a site-based practical qualification and a college-based intermediate construction award qualification. The MVQ Level 2 in brickwork is a construction industry norm for a minimum a minimum requirement to be allowed to work as a bricklayer on most large uh, or larger sites. The Intermediate Construction Award is a college based qualification to say that you have also met the college training standards for a standard level for that trade that combines with the MVQ qualification. To be a more respected, trained and educated trained tradesperson, it's, it is understood that you require the MVQ site-based qualification training um, and ICA uh, college-based qualification and training, so they, you need them combined. Um, I then decided to carry on to do the third year of the apprenticeship as a number of my classmates chose to stop at the end of the second year just so they could go out fully on site and work towards a, big, a bigger wage quicker. But I was looking at the bigger picture um, and wanted to further invest in my own further education, training and learning, which was a MBQ level three practical qualification and training, as well as the college training and qualification alongside that whilst doing the day release through college that would achieve an advanced craft award from the college, uh, which combines with the MVQ level three as a higher level of qualification that gives you the level of training and qualifications to progress onto a foreman at some point in the future if you wanted to. Um, I was also made aware at the end of my MVQ level two that if I ever wanted to progress into the uh, in in the future into construction management of some kind, it would make sense to complete my MVQ level three as that would then allow me to go on to the next stage of entry requirements um, in in college onto a level four construction management higher national certificate at some point in the future. Even if I decided to go back to college after completing a number of years on site, just working as a bricklayer. So career progression and qualifications. I then after finishing my three year uh, bricklaying apprenticeship, I uh, then set up my own small building company at the age of 21 um, and was doing extensions, conservatory bases and small private building works with approximately five people working for me. Unfortunately, me running my own company at that time was short lived and lasted only around nine months until the 2008 World Recession kicked in and I was in and out of work like many people and companies at that time. So rather than sitting around in a negative time during the recession time, I decided to use that time to go and do something positive and start further study, progressing on to and starting a level four HNC in construction management whilst working part time for a large national construction company um, completing government contracts. I then progressed my way up the management career ladder, working for a number of the largest national main contractors, national house builders, 
and then companies completing high-end multi-million pound building projects. Um, during my construction management career progression, I moved up from site management to project management to co contracts management and then to construction director management level. In this period of my career progression, I became addicted to education and learning so that I could be the best I could be in my role and so I could bridge my academic weaknesses. So I completed a number of qualifications, training courses and obtained uh, professional chartership membership titles with four of the main industry leading professional chartered associations, as well as currently nearly completing a level eight diploma in global strategic direction and leadership, which is uh, an equivalent to a doctorate level with me needing to only complete the thesis top, top up to my level eight qualification and then I will earn the title of DBA to be at doctorate level in my professional, so being Dr Luke Burkett one day soon, I hope. Um, so career progression and qualification. So these are a number of the high level um, qualifications and memberships that I hold. Um, I do have a lot more, but I can't put them all on the here. So I've only chosen the high level ones. On the left hand side highlighted in blue, you can see from working from bottom up, you've got uh, the qualifications as a and, tr and training level of a bricklayer uh, working on the tools. And then if you work your way up um, to the top, that is the natural career progression, training and qualification progression up to a, a senior management or director level. Um, so you can understand that you can work from a, a, if you come from a practical background, you can still work your way up the career ladder into an academic world. Um, so yeah, the, no matter your background, you can still progress to that position. Um, example projects that I've worked on. Um, so these are some high-end prime residential projects. Um, in Wallingham, Surrey, if anyone knows it. Um, some really nice properties. Uh, example, some more example projects that I've worked on. Again, high-end um, projects, a mixture of Seven Oaks in Kent, uh, Wallingham again in Surrey. Uh, so, and then some example mid-scale development. So, uh, in Ealing, West Drayton, Croydon and Wembley. And then some large scale projects that I was managing um, in uh, this one that was in Wembley um, and it had uh, a number of tower blocks um, in the project. Um, so my personal achievement with setting up my own company, Future Homes Design and Build at the start of last year. Um, so I progressed up through that career ladder to the point to where I wanted to set up my own company again. Um, and I've done that at the start of last year. So fingers crossed everything goes well in the future moving forward. Um, people from both practical and academic backgrounds can have a great career in the construction industry. In the construction industry, people from a practical background, especially can easily transfer these skills into many construction career paths. The common strengths and attributes of a dyslexic, practical, similar educational understanding background individuals can be used in many ways and career paths, as these are requirements for many practical and practical thinking roles, such as skilled trades, so bricklayers, tilers, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, plasterers, ground workers, painters, kitchen fitters, bathroom fitters, roofers, magic men, and many more specialist trades, um, as well as into site management, project management, contracts management and director levels, um, design backgrounds, so architects and design managers, site engineers, building inspectors, surveyors, and many more. Moral of the story, if you have a dream that you want to achieve, don't let others put you down. 
Don't let any physical or mental uh, mental difficulties stop you. Don't let any disadvantages you have stop you. Don't give up on your dream. Every time someone knocks you down, pick yourself up and go again stronger and harder with the knowledge and experience that the last experience gave you. Failure is not failure. It's a lesson to make you stronger and wiser. So top tips uh, for working out what's best for you. So try and look ahead to imagine what you would enjoy doing as a permanent career for your future. If you are unsure of what you would like to do, start by understanding um, what you enjoy and what your strengths are and then see how these attributes can be transferred into a relatable qualifications and career. If you come from more of a practical background as I did, then it may be more suitable for you to pursue a practical based training qualification route and career. But remember, as I did, um, you can start with a practical route and then convert into a more academic training qualification route at a later point. If you are still unsure, uh, but have a rough idea of some options of what you would like to do, find out where your local or best suited colleges are and request information on the different courses. Request to speak to lecturers so they can explain what they teach and, and their teaching methods and see if you are able to visit a number of the different subject classes of the current college course students so you can see what is involved in the course structure. I've highlighted this in red because this is very important for all of you to understand. This will need to be done sooner rather than later ahead of the next September college year starting as if you miss the deadlines for the yearly enrolment periods onto the college course and not take it seriously, you will not be able to join any courses that year and will have to wait a full year to try and enrol on a course um, the year later, which means every year you miss enrolling on a course, you are being left behind by your year group, which if, if left long, uh, too long, sorry, you will find it hard to start from the bottom as life and its bills and commitments catch up on you. I have friends that said, uh, had always said they wanted to study a trade apprenticeship, but kept leaving it year after year until the point that it became too hard to start and, and being on such a low wage as an apprentice that they will now and cannot ever do it because they will not be able to get the government funding towards the apprenticeship as well as uh, as you do for the younger um, age group and they will not be able to afford to live on the low wages because of their adult bills and commitments so don't miss your opportunity to start your progressive and worthwhile career once you have done all of the above described processes you then need to understand the steps you need to take to enroll on a course, engage and employ uh, to an employer to take you on as an apprentice or intern or similar route whilst doing an apprenticeship college course. As if you don't engage and find an employer to employ you as an apprentice whilst doing the college apprenticeship course, then you will not be able to join the apprenticeship course without the employer as well as well so you need to understand exactly what the requirements are to join that course type they they now do especially in the construction industry academic based so degree based apprenticeships which can be great for an academic person to get gain a degree qualification whilst gaining on the job uh, training ex uh, apprenticeship experience such as a quantity surveyor uh, and there's many more uh, different um, management roles that you can pursue. Um, so understand the trade and profession you are going to take and then find out when and how you need to enroll to the college ready for the new college, uh, September college start date. Find out the requirements of engaging with and obtaining an apprenticeship employer either through the college or to be um, searched for and obtained by yourself. 
If you can achieve, if you can receive help from the college to obtain an employer, then seek their guidance on what needs to be done and follow their steps they told you to follow. If you need to find an employer yourself for the construction industry, then the CITB, so the Construction Industry Training Board, can assist with finding an employer for you and even funding for different apprenticeship routes. But you may need to find out and list a number of large um, a large number of potential employers and then you need to contact all um, them all explaining you would like to do an apprenticeship so don't stop until you find an employer that will take you on and commit to the requirements for facilitating the apprenticeship for you as your new apprenticeship employer make sure you follow the course and employer requirements and successfully complete your apprenticeship and then be ready to go into the big wide world as a qualified and trained apprentice. apprentice so. um, but do understand there will be a number of years to learn and progress up to the professional level, but this is all normal for everyone else that follows the same route. Top tips going the academic route. So understand what profession you are going to take or at least the course that you feel is right for you and may lead on to the later career you would like to do and then find out when and how you need to enroll to the college and or university ready for the new September college university start date. Find out the requirements of engaging with and obtaining an apprenticeship internship employer if your course requires it um, either through the college university or to be searched for and obtained by yourself. If not, then um, you, you go down the um, university um, um, training route. If you can receive help from the college or university to obtain a, an employer, then seek their guidance on what needs to be done and follow their steps they tell you to follow. If you need to find an employer yourself, um, if that's a requirement for your type of uh, training, um, progression and course. Uh, for the construction industry, as I mentioned before, then the CITB, so the Construction Industry Training Board, can assist with finding an employer for you and even funding for different apprenticeship routes or course routes, um, and different variations. Um, but you may need to find out a list, a large number of potential employers and then you need to contact them all explaining you would like to do an apprenticeship or another similar course type. Um, so again, don't stop until you find an employer that will take you on and commit to the requirements for facilitating the apprenticeship for you as the new apprenticeship employer. Make sure you follow the course and the employer requirements and successfully complete your apprenticeship, internship, college, university course. So you are able to follow, sorry, college, and then you are able to follow on to the university of your choice. That will be relative to the degree route you have chosen. And then be ready to go into the big wide world, as I mentioned before, as, as a qualified and trained uh, apprentice, intern or degree qualified person. But do also understand there will, um, will still be a number of years for you to learn and progress up to the pro professional level. But again, this is all normal for everyone that follows the same routes. Um, here's some useful um, links um, uh, that you can use um, that give you further information on apprenticeship routes. Um, again some useful links for academic routes and some general um, links for general both or every every type of route um, that you would choose to follow um, so thank you that's the end of the apprenticeship uh, sorry the uh, powerpoint um, and uh, presentation i hope you um, got some useful information out of it um, but do let me know if there's any questions and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Um, thank you, Luke, and thank you very much um, everyone for joining us today. Um, we've got a few questions to go through. 
And um, first one come through was what inspired you to work in the construction industry? OK, um, so I knew that it was a very practical industry, um, especially at a trade level. Um, so I knew I was good at practical things um, and I had inspiration from um, builders and bricklayers seeing what they actually build. Um, and as I mentioned in my personal story that I, I had the ambition to build my own house one day um, and in the meantime work into that um, position to be able to do that. I, I thought it'd be great to do something I enjoyed and, and build houses for others. Thank you, Luke. Um, the next one is, um, how did you find the apprenticeship? Um, as in what, how, how I went through the process from leaving school and, and looking into the apprenticeship and starting it. Yeah, and in terms of your experience as well within it. Yeah, so um, as I sort of described through the presentation, um, I personally went down to my local college um, in Reading uh, to find out what courses they did. I had a rough idea of uh, me wanting to do some sort of trade, um, but I asked to go along to some open days and open evenings, I believe, um, to go and see some of the different courses being held and to see whether I felt those courses would be right for me. Um, and also you, you get the chance to interact with some of the tutors and lecturers um, that are covering all of the different um, courses so you can find out whether they're suitable for you and whether you think you'll enjoy going down that pathway. And, that, and that's what I did. I, I saw bricklaying personally. I thought that looks really interesting. I, I enjoy creating things and uh, having something that's long lasting that you can uh, visually see once you've completed it. Um, so you get a, a sense of satisfaction out of completing something artistic and, and uh, visual. Thank you very much, Luke. And the next question we've got is, what do you enjoy most about working in the construction industry? OK, um, so it's uh, as it's a very sort of hands on practical industry. Um, as I said before, you, both academics and pra practical people um, can have a very good career in construction and enjoyable career. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it can be very satisfying to um, successfully build uh, a development or complete a development as an individual in, with your input, but also as teams of trades and teams of management and, and organisations um, combined. So it, it can be uh, yeah, a, a very satisfying industry to work in. Um, we've just got another question that's just come through now. Um, and they've said, um, I believe construction has a more people to work in it. Is this true? Uh, do they need more people to work in the construction? Yeah. Well, there is, I, um, as far as I'm aware, there's a big gap at the moment with um, trades, labour and, and even management um, in the construction in the industry. Um, so I believe the government are really trying to push to bring the new generation into the construction industry because there is a, an age gap at the moment where we're just lacking the number of uh, required people for all of the um, career pathways in the construction industry. So yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunities. And um, as I said, with the different types of apprenticeships and also courses, uh, different types of courses depending there's a lot of government funding out there uh, and especially through people like the CITB um, and some others that are there to support uh, the next generation coming into the construction industry. So it's the, the, the doors are open, 
and the opportunities are there. It's just for the next generation to choose what they want to do and, and go through that door and, and pursue it. Thank you, Luke. Um, we're getting a few more questions coming in now. Um, the next one we've got is um, I'm a master's uh, I'm a master's international student of civil engineering in the UK. Can you explain to me what other options available for me? I'm very good at designing. Can you guide me some routes? OK, um, so if if he's uh, sorry, is it a, well, male or female? I'm sorry. Um, so. Yeah, you, you can progress so you could either diverse into another um, similar level um, qualification and career because it's never too late to diverse then um, in the construction industry. If you ha have had enough of doing a, uh, your certain career path at that time, um, you can then diverse into many other different things um, and and also so if if they are at a master's level, they can progress on to um, a PhD level. So that would be the next step up if they wanted to do that as a qualification. Um, and there are so many qualifications out there within the construction industry. So it would be to really work out what they wanted to now do with their career, what they would enjoy. Um, uh, in a type of management role, design role, um, and see whether whether it would make sense to do like a top up qualification to bring them up to a PhD level, or whether that's not even needed and they might be able to just transfer their current qualifications and experience into a new career direction. Um, thank you, Luke. Um, and then Following from the first question we just asked you a minute ago um, about needing more people to work, a student has asked within that, um, what is it like working in, in the cold in winter? <laughs> uh, the honest answer is it can be quite cold. <laughs> um, but no, you, you learn to um, deal with it. Um, it's, just, it's just like any other outdoors career. Um, the 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 point that I like with construction is because it is outdoors, you're always out interacting and even if it's so you'll have the good and the bad. Sometimes you need to wrap up warm and and um, some days you'll get wet from rain and all the usual things. And then on the flip side, when it's nice sunny weather, it's the best job you can ever be doing because you're getting paid to be walking around or doing what you're doing out in the sun. So it's it can it's got sort of pros and cons to different times and diff, different weather conditions throughout the year. But you learn you learn to deal with it. It's it's not an issue and uh, you can learn to enjoy it as well. Thank you, Luke. Um, just one final question um, before we finish today's talk. Um, what is one bit of best advice would you give um, to young people um, thinking about maybe construction as an industry? For them? OK, um, I would say, as I mentioned in my presentation, really have a think about what you would enjoy doing because you need to enjoy whatever career path you follow. Um, there's no point in choosing a career path just because it pays well or uh, you think it's going to make you happy, but it's not. So you need to understand what makes you happy and what you're good at. If you are if you enjoy being more academic um, in an office space, that's maybe the, the, the career path um, you need to follow. If you enjoy being outside, hands on, um in in the wet and the sun um then maybe that is the career path to follow but you need to you you don't want to waste too much time um going down qualification and career paths that you're not going to enjoy and you're not going to want to do uh, for a lot of your lifetime um so you need to uh, now is a crucial point to start thinking about what is best for you um, and, and what the best route is for you.
Thank you very much, Luke, and thank you for everyone joining us today. Um, we hope you've enjoyed today's talk and there's plenty more um, taking place this week and next week. Um, so we hope you can join us for another um, live talk and we hope you all have a um, great day ahead. Thanks so much. Thank you.